And welcome to Chaos to Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reno. Batting down the hatches. Quite a storm this weekend. Uh, more like a nor'easter. Could be a... Probably will never get named. Although I do think there's going to be some subtropical moisture in this. But I don't... Not sure if the if it will ever get a subtropical uh, a storm designation. But it's going to be a pretty strong storm. Want to highlight it for you. Now, depending on how much this strengthens. But... I, I, I think this storm is going to strengthen enough and it's going to be closest to the coast that it's going to be a damaging storm. I want to show you some highlights here. Prolonged, strong onshore flow. And don't forget, we still have the king tides here. So this strong onshore flow is going to be amplified by the king tides. I think there's extensive damage that we're going to see to the coastal homes, beaches, boardwalks. There could be overwash on coastal roadways. And I think by the time this system ends, and don't forget, it's going to be slowly pushing up the coast as we get toward the weekend. It may not leave until Monday. I mean, th we could be looking at billions of dollars in damage with this and economic loss. I mean, thus far, everybody's talking about that it's a nor'easter, and I certainly see that, but it's going to be aided by tropical moisture. I, I think there's going to be a very, very nasty storm to deal with here. Let me show you the ingredients. You know what? It does have a sense of a winter storm to it, doesn't it? Let, let, let me show you what I mean. Let's start with the ingredients here, and it begins with this. You have a frontal boundary that's coming south, and that front is going to stall as we head into Thursday in the Friday, so it's going to stall right in here. All right, now, notice what's going on. You have your area of high pressure here across the northeast. That's funneling the cooler, drier air south, and then you have all the tropical moisture down here south of the boundary. So right off the bat, and you see this a lot with winter storms, you have a boundary that's stuck. That's a location for a storm to form. All you need is some energy to come into the flow and form this storm. And, and we're going to see it. And, it. and as usual, it's going to be a little complicated because it's going to be what? Like in a winter storm, it's going to be coming out in pieces here. Let me show you how this is going to come about here. I want to start, uh, let's start with, um, let's start with this evening. Let me do a little two shot here. Okay, so you've got this energy here and we're going to be watching energy coming on down from, uh, from Canada here. So this is this afternoon. Let me go into this evening. Watch how you start carving out a trough right here across the Southeast. Let's go to Friday morning. So here you go. Here's this piece. This is your upper load. This is what's going to form the storm. What will guide the storm is this piece of energy coming across uh, northern Minnesota. That'll be by Friday morning. Now, where is that system now? Let's play it backwards. It's right in here. It's across uh, northern British Columbia. So this is going to steer the storm. This little piece of energy right here across Kansas, this is what's going to form the storm. So let's go to Friday afternoon. There it is. So here's the upper low. Here's the upper low. This is going to form the storm, and this will be guiding this northward. Watch the upper level pattern. This is a GFS and European. They're very similar. Let's go to Saturday morning. So European, shown here, GFS. European, GFS, European, GFS. Very similar on where the energy that's going to fo uh, form the storm and the steering upper low back here across Michigan, very similar. Um, let's let's play this forward to Sunday morning. European GFS, European GFS. Now, a little different here. The GFS, remember, this northern piece is the steering piece. This, the southern piece, is the storm. You'll note there's a little bit of difference here and it will show up in the surface pattern. So the European, this GFS, look at the European. It's not far as east with it, but you'll notice both of them very slimmer. Monday morning, European GFS, European GFS, European GFS, European GFS. Both of them show that this upper low is going to take this storm and move it northward along the coast, and it should strengthen in time. Um so the modeling is pretty well aligned on this. Let me show you the surface map, give you another little uh, uh, glimpse into it. Let's show you the European. Here comes the European. This is Saturday evening. Watch it. Comes right up the coast. 995, 993, 992, 994. This is the European. 
Now, GFS is very similar, although the GFS takes it a little closer to the coast, but the surface panel is pretty similar. 991 millibars. Let's go to Sunday evening. 989 on the GFS, European slower, but still has that same general area with the rain and the wind. The UK Met, very similar, uh, maybe not as strong, but pretty similar to European. 994 low off the Delmarva Peninsula by Monday morning. So Monday morning, the UK Met, the GFS, the Europeans a little farther offshore, but they're all in the same ballpark. Now, the question is, will this become subtropical? You know, you're bringing the energy from from the continental U.S., so it's not tropical to begin with. It's more like a, I'd call it a, a winter storm or a nor'easter, but it is going to be, the storm is going to have about 24 hours to go over this area in here. I, I think for this to become a tropical system, this low would have to sit there for about 48 to 72 hours. So I, I don't think this is going to get characterized as a subtropical storm. However, it's going to have the look and feel of a tropical storm, especially on the northern side of this. I don't have any doubt of that. In fact, if I, if I go back to the surface map, you know, l let's go to the, don't know why I did that. Let's go to Saturday here. Uh, this is European. Uh, I bet you, I bet you, you see this dark red, that's going to be thunderstorms. So you're going to have rain and thunderstorms on this northern side um, as it comes northward. Um, so I, I, I think there's going to be tropical elements to this storm. I just don't think the structure will ever get to a tropical system. It's really up to the National Hurricane Center what they're going to do with this. But the, uh, the one thing to remember, whether this gets characterized or not as a tropical storm, I, I think this is going to be a very damaging storm. And I think it's going to have the look and feel of a tropical storm. I want to show you, if we just take the European, which is not the strongest of the solutions the American model is, look at the wind gust being shown with this as we get into Saturday. Here's Saturday. So the storm here along the coast, you're starting to get wind gusts here, uh, 30 to 40 miles per hour. Let's go forward to Sunday morning. This is Sunday morning. All of a sudden, there's gusts of 45 miles per hour in the yard of banks. That's bad news for them with the winds coming in out of the east-northeast. The, the, the apex of this storm, the worst of the storm, may actually be the Jersey Shore uh, toward the Delmarva Peninsula in here. Because as I sh go this forward, look at Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening in here. Look at these winds battling the Jersey Shore and the Maryland, Delaware beaches, although it starts coming offshore. But, I mean, the Jersey Shore, 50 to 60 mile per hour winds being shown here. This is at 10 meters, so it's a little above. But to get the idea that you're going to have a prolonged, strong wind event here. I mean, it even begins, look at it on Saturday. Look at this come northward as the storm comes northward. I mean, this is a battering of the Jersey Shore, Maryland, Delaware beaches, and the Outer Banks of North Carolina. You know, so when you look at this... I think this has the potential to be a very bad storm here. I want to end with this. I mean, th th this is the area. And, and in within this red area, right, I think this is where the worst of the storm is going to be, right in here. And I think you're going to see a lot of damage to the coast here, extensive beach erosion, coastal flooding. Uh, there's going to be some heavy rain with this as well. But, I mean, there could be overwash on the coastal highways and a lot of coastal flooding. Don't forget, you have the king tides. So I, I think this has the potential of creating a lot of damage here from the Outer Banks to the Jersey Shore, and in particular, northern Outer Banks toward the Jersey Shore. This is going to be a formidable storm here as we head toward the weekend. Now, We'll see how bad it is. It depends on the strength and how close it comes to the coast. But I think uh, e even if the Europeans write it's not as strong as the American and it's a stronger off the, and it's more off the coast, I think that's going to produce a lot of damage. So batten down the ha hatches. This is quite a storm coming to the Mid-Atlantic coast, coast this weekend. If you have any questions or comments, you can follow me on, uh, on X. I'm at uh, Accurano, and uh, we'll stay with you.